Hey everybody and welcome back. Well you may be able to hear it's raining. It's actually been pouring down since about I don't know eight o'clock last night. Ponds full, all the flowing water everywhere. Alright, so all we have to do is this. Uh, saddle came, well I went and collected it. Another absolutely beautiful job. I haven't fastened it on yet because I still haven't made my mind up whether to paint the tank and the seat base or to polish them. I haven't made my mind up yet. So anyway, this is the run up to Christmas. Uh, in fact you're going to see this, you are watching it early because we'll be away in Baltimore from Saturday afternoon till Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday I'm not sure. So I thought I'd see what I could do during the week and let you uh, have that a day early before we set off and then there probably won't be one New Year's week because we'll New Year's weekend because we'll be away most of that week and then we'll be doing stuff when we get back. So anyway we'll see what we can get done as I say it's only going to be tank this week because that's all that's left. Oh uh, kickstart I don't think you can see all the way down there. Uh, you can, I found a bottom folding kickstart. I think it's a used one. Looks just about right on eBay. Nice and cheap. Oh, well, when I say cheap, I'm sort of meaning that uh, <clears throat> it won't be a huge loss if it doesn't work. If you know what I mean. Like you get a proper one that was more expensive, I would get it. but. Just for an experiment, I don't want to lay out a lot of money, start cutting things up and then find they don't work. Um, I did have one comment about, you know, the BS engine being harder to turn over than a Triumph. Uh, so the weld maybe wouldn't hold. Weld isn't like glue. If things welded properly, then the two parts that you've welded together become one piece. So... For instance, when I was training to be a slinger, British Steel Corporation, uh, Grenchtown Works, number 9 mil. Oh, one of the things which intrigued me in the training was we talked about chains, and you know a chain link goes round and then it's welded. Well, when chains snap, if you check them, it's never the weld that snaps. It's always on the corners. So, I'm not worried about welding two kickstarts together they'll be fine and plus don't forget this now is really low compression and we've got the decompressor and everything like that so that's not going to be a problem anyway um, to move on with this we're going to go and look at it and I made myself another little tool for doing the sheet metal work so that's all I can think of to say let's go oh I've, it's actually cooling now the panel I've, I've started I've re nailed it, so we'll be all ready to go. Before we start, look what I've just had to make. Do not leave parcels here. Four times in a row, FedEx has just left the stuff laid outside. Front of the workshop doors here, which are like 20 feet away from the main road, out in the weather. In fact, the last FedEx parcel, it was out in the snow and then Amazon who always deliver to George's no matter how many times we've caught the drivers and told them I came past the other day and there was a you know like one of those brown padded envelopes just laid on the floor I think he just drove into the drive threw it out the window and then drove away again so alright let's zoom you in hold on you know, I'm having a lot of trouble today with exposure. I don't know. I've got to look. I'll have a quick look at the settings. I honestly, although I know all the settings for the stills, uh, I'm not that sure about the settings for the video. I haven't touched anything, but suddenly um, it's as if it's a much smaller aperture and a lot darker. So anyway, what have we got to do? Well, as you know, we're pretty good 
along the back till we get to here right so what I've got to do is bring this in so we've got to shrink this edge so that it scrunches up and pulls in right also I've got to do a little bit along this top edge because it's it's bored a little and as you know that's got to be straight so I'll do that first and then what are we done with it hold on a second now Dick made himself one of these and somebody mentioned make it custom on YouTube I do watch that lad he's very good and one of them he actually showed how he made that this is a tucking fork and the idea is you put that on there and you twist it and you remember when I was beating into the shrinking stump how it, the edge formed ridges like that and then you fold the ridges in on themselves so it pulls the metal in well that's what this is for so I actually made it he made his with the big sanded disc to get the the taper I did it on the lathe which I was quite pleased with you know it's a slightly different because I did this one and I decided I didn't like the taper I think that was four degrees so I made it two degrees but that doesn't matter that will work perfectly so let me do this top edge and then we'll see about tucking that other edge all right then let's have a go at this I got myself some gloves with rubber fronts so they grip because I find that uh, after you've been working with this for a while your hands are absolutely black so what we're going to do is we're going to try and shrink this edge this is all purely experimental might work might not work who knows so what we do is we put that in and we twist it into a tuck like that and then we work our way around actually I noticed he puts this in the vise and oh, it does not twist it in doesn't it I'm going quite deeply in we're probably going to do two rows of tucks deep ones and then shallow ones showing up and of course this is really the first time I used one of these so it really is an experiment So, who knows if this is right. Now then, what we do now is we close these up and we start apparently at the outer end to sort of lock it in and then go along.
would say that has brought that in. We'll probably have to do some along the top. But let, let me just have a little go at that on the bag to finish that off and then we'll look at it on the book. Right, let's have a look. Need to cut the top a little bit. But I think that is coming in. Okay, I've got to make this bottom one curve a little as well. Well, you can guess what happened, can't you? It got closer and then suddenly it got miles away again. And I just lost my temper with it. So I've cut that and that is about right. I've got to bring it in a little at the front. I've got nothing that uh, actually the clamps when I clamp it along the edge won't take care of. And I started making the one for the other side. And to be honest, hang on, let me move you slightly. I've only worked on this about 15 minutes. Look, with the top cut. It's almost spot on. What I did was I wheeled it a little bit and checked it. A little bit, checked it. Wheel slightly different, wheel slightly different. And, and then as you can see, I beat this to get it round. And um, maybe this is it. Maybe I'm trying to do too much in one go. But that is almost there. So what I'm hoping to get done today is get this finished and these two halves welded together. And then we'll finish forming them a little bit when they're in one piece. Then we'll see about making two front ones. I've got enough alloy to make a brand new one of those if need be. So let me carry on with this and see if I can get it spot on. So that's not bad. Very little bit of work. I can weld all this and then when I've welded this into one piece I can work on this part because then it, it won't be able to See, once that's welded, I'm assuming that if I back this a little bit, it's not just going to flip out because that is going to hold it in place. So, I don't, I've only been on that about half an hour. And that looks pretty good to me. All right, I'm going to clean this up, put some tacks. All right, so there it is. I've welded it up. I've run the DA over it. Still got a few bumps down here to get out. Shrinking is the real problem. That thing only works to a certain extent and it does rather leave it marked. But that's getting pretty damn close. I've trimmed it once. It's about exactly right. It just needs bringing in very slightly at the bottom. Other than that, it's not bad. So I think I'll start on the front pieces just because this gets annoying. I guess, you know, people say, oh, buy this, buy that, buy the other. I like having tools, I'll admit, but I say, at the most, I'd make two tanks a year. Anyway, the thing is, what I was going to say is, when it sort of doesn't quite work, it gets annoying. So let's move on to another bit and come back to this. Right, well, so I've beavered away and beavered away. I haven't filmed it, but I went off to lunch. I got this back part more or less nice. And uh, I thought, you know what? I'm going to use that piece I cut for the front as a sort of little training thing. So I rolled it in the English wheel till it was about flat again. And then I started working on it and I discovered a couple of things. One, something that we mentioned earlier, a really accurate template is really useful. And the other thing is, don't use the machines too much. Because I was looking at this and I thought, you know what? this just sort of twists so I actually got the plate and twisted it and then started to work from there and 
as you can see it's got to be finagled up there but look it's touching all the way around and at the bottom you know I do a lot of photography I used to do uh, sort of photo articles for all sorts of things horse magazines bike magazines and when people used to ask me about cameras I always used to tell them don't get caught up in the equipment it's all about what you do and it's the same with this I was thinking oh got an English wheel it got to do this got to do that and a lot of this was just me pulling and pushing it and then a little bit of finagling that I was overthinking it's not so much a, well it is a little bit of a double curve but the thing is as I say it twists from here to there that's the big thing it's not so much that it rolls this way and it rolls that way but it has a little bit of a roll in it and then it twists sort of from from that corner to this corner you twist it in and that brings this round bugger me look little bit of touching up and that's going to be fine I've changed the top a little bit I got so close with this piece I thought bugger it I'm, <laughs> I'm going to modify the shape of the tank a little bit and keep this piece right so I've got to bend it out a little but you see when I pull this out here it's going to push that top down right as this comes out that's going to go down so that will line up there a little bit of shaping a little bit of bending it over here and that will be good and that's enough for the day oh look at this <laughs> that's why I said my hands get absolutely terrible see the this all that is just coming off the alloy all right so we'll at least get another day in this week so I'm off and I'll see you tomorrow. There it is welded on and starting to smooth it in. Got a little bit to do at the top just to work that in. But as you can see it fits nicely there. It's touching all the way around here. So, I think what we'll do now is, I should have made a template off that before I welded it in, shouldn't I? But I can still do it. Make a template of that. I'm going to try and make it exactly to the size. I've got enough alloy to make a couple of panels, so I'll try and cut one exactly to that size and shape. Because it's not bent that much, as I say, it's more of this twist. And then we'll see about making one of those for the other side. Alright, so I've cut out a template. Right. And then, what I've got to remember is, it's going to go on the other side. This is the outside. This is going to be the outside. So, I've made sure I mark that so that I know my curve is going to be this way so I'm going to run it into the wheel like that all right now when I did this first one I had some curve left in it I'd run it in upside down to get the majority of the curve out but there was a little bit of curve in so we're going to go front to back So we're going to put a bit of curve in like that. So let me get this right. That's so that this back edge matches the back half of that. And when I've got this sort of the way I want it, we'll see about doing that corner to corner thing. Right, so this is sort of partly with the wheel and partly with me forming it. So this is going to get trimmed, don't worry about that. But I'm looking to get it somewhat close to that to here right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to 
bend this from here to here. Well, that's the plan anyway. All right, just in case you're wondering, I haven't nailed this. Right, so we're actually going to put this onto here like this. Then bend it like that. And that, you see, is what brings this in here. Okay, so let me uh, just out of sight there a little bit. Okay, right, that's coming along. So let me keep bending this and see what I get to, and then I'll show you. Alright, so. Starting to come together. See, just about there, it needs to go in there a bit it's about right back here actually wants a little bit taken out of the top so it'll drop down slightly there we go see I've still got to work this a little bit it's just slightly out there I don't mean the gap I mean this is slightly higher than that it's about right and then this starts to get higher than that then I need to cut a piece. I'll be honest with you. Every time I feel like I have to cut a piece off, it's a really, uh, I think, oh God, shall I cut this off or not? But I think when I've cut that little top strip off, then that'll go in more. This is where it needs shrinking. Really does. You know, you're almost tempting me to buy one of those shrinking things. I don't think they're that expensive and again I don't have to get a really expensive one because I don't use it very often. <laughs> Maybe look into that. Uh, not sure if I'll get this finished and welded today but we'll try because this is all I'm going to get uh, done this week. Alright, it's uh, time for Sani. There we go very minor work to do in fact what I think I'm going to do is get it to touch in a couple of places and tack it and then work the rest of it from there but oh god I've got a gap at the bottom there now <sighs> every time I think I've got it spot on I think we maybe need a little cutting off that so that'll go in. Let me have a go at that. You know, if you have to fit in like five places, say here, there, up here, into there, down there, what's that? One, two, three, four, and along the bottom five places, you'll get four of them, then the fifth one's out. So you'll put that one right, and then this one's out. So that's annoyed me enough for now. Uh, I think the best thing I can do, and I, I can't do it now, is at places like that where it touches perfectly and it's smooth, I'm going to tack it. And then I'm gradually going to work my way around tacking it, tap it, tack, get it all fixed up, and then, because now there's, that's nice as well, it's nice at the bottom. That is it, unbelievably. All right, that's enough tanking. Yeah, that's still on nicely. Very good. All right then, that's as much as we can do this week and that's gonna be for this year. So, I was expecting to get this finished, but of course I was a couple of weeks sort of bores to combat, which I wasn't expecting. So I thought, what the hell, I've put the uh, the remote fuel thing on. Let's see if it'll start. Here's the thing, look. I got the remote fuel out. Look at that. Really good tubing they used on that, wasn't it? So that can go in the bin. All right, well, I've had the tap on, so it should be full up. Pressure. 
Over. Try my flash uh, enriching thing. Never thought of that. Nothing. Oh well, doesn't look as if we're going to go out end the year with a bang. Oh, then again. Is full. Well, I was just thinking the other day, I've never had a bike that didn't start. Then who knows what's what with this carburetor. We'll give it a couple more kicks and... Let's try them. See what a bit of... See, normally I wouldn't use any throttle on a B44. Maybe just a little twiddle with a the screwdriver there. Where are we? Where's that? Michael, the compressor lever. That is a good way to finish the year. Sounds quite healthy, doesn't it? All right. 
let me move you a moment. All right, I'm going to walk into the frame this time instead of touching my nose. Okay, everybody. Well, as I say, that seems to me to be a pretty good way to finish the year. So we know it runs. All I've got to do is uh, make the top for the petrol tank, decide if I'm going to polish it or paint it and fit it. And then uh, we've got snow now, but the weather's not bad. We'll see what more I can do. And then we might give it a test ride. If not, you'll have to wait till the spring. If we come back from Baltimore and there's a foot of snow, you'll have to wait. But anyway, until then, you have a great Christmas. Hope you all have a really good 2024. And during 2024, stay safe and enjoy yourselves.